Hello, everyone. My name is Eric K. Thomas, Editor-in-Chief of The Quintessential Gentleman, and today we are talking to Adrian Holmes, Mr. Uncle Phil on Peacock's Bel Air. What's going on, my brother? How are you? Oh, blessed and highly favored, man. How are you? I'm doing well, doing well. Glad to see you. I know the last time I saw you was in Miami at American Black Film Festival. That's right. We had a great time out there, that Miami heat. Yes. We yeah, had- I love Miami. That was good. That was a great time, man. A lot of people out there to see it. Everybody coming together, you know, supporting their projects, and you know, yeah, it was, it was. I hope to go next year as well. Of course, of course, us as well. We're gonna have another. I saw you at our culture release party. Definitely invite you to the next one. I think we gonna do another one out there, so that'll be amazing. Thank you. Love to be there. Of course, of course. So you know, now we at season two. I want to know um, how has life changed for you as an actor, um, being on one such a hit show, great show, popular show, um, and now you're hitting for season two. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, I'm definitely a little I'm more recognizable now, for sure. Uh, when I'm in Whole Foods or Trader Joe's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm used to hearing, Uncle Phil, Uncle Phil, <laughs> you know, and I'm in the produce section, you know, and I'll be looking up, I'm like, hey, how you doing? They're like, I love what you're doing. And, and I tell you, that's the best compliment is when, you know, people come up and say, you know, man, you really you know, help me and my wife or you help my family, you know, just your show is such a positive impact on the culture and the community. And, and I love that. I feel so proud. I feel so blessed to be a part of that narrative. And I, I look at our show like medicine. It's like medicine for the culture, for the, for the community, you know, because there's so many situations uh, and scenarios that we go through on the show that we that we talk about that we can all relate to and identify with, and we 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 show you know we provide solutions to a lot of these problems and um, conflicts and obstacles that we all have to navigate uh, our way through in this crazy matrix that we live in. You know, so yeah, I'm very proud. Very, it's just life's been great. I'm living my dream. Awesome. Awesome. So you have definitely made your imprint, you know, with playing such a positive black male um, role on TV. Um, now, you know, in terms of looking at other scripts and other opportunities, are you still looking for, you know, that kind of positive black male representation? Or to be honest, are there any more roles like that out there to, um, if we're being truthful? Well, there are. And I think that, you know, because of shows like Bel Air, you know, people are, are leaning more towards that narrative because it's 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 necessary and it's uh, important. And um, people realize that. And there's there's an audience for it, you know, it's, you know. So um, as for me, um, I love to ins- I aspire to inspire. I love to be able to play characters that provoke thought and, and you know, uh, are inspiring and make people um, just feel good about themselves and I feel good about myself playing those roles but at the same time it's about the story itself and someone has to be the antagonist you know we all can't be that character so if I have to play the antagonist to tell that same story I will gladly play that role and as an actor it's also good to show different gears to show yourself in a different light so they don't you don't get pigeonholed and and placed in a box you know um, and unfortunately, that happens to a lot of actors um, that have come and gone quickly because they just can't get work because nobody can, you know, n- unsee them as that character. Um, so, you know, you have to be very strategic in your choices, uh, in the roles you play. Um, I, as I say, it's, the game's chess, it ain't checkers, you know. So um, uh, for me, moving forward, um, yeah, I just uh, want to find projects that are going to be in alignment with me and uh, and my brand and, and what I want to do, whether it be uh, uh, in film uh, or, or still on, on television. I mean, I'm, I'm in theater as well. I love the stage. I, I can't wait to get back to uh, the stage again and do like I'd love to be on Broadway. That's that's actually a bucket list of mine is to do something on Broadway. Yeah. Believe it or not. Uncle Phil would love to be on Broadway. Phil would like to be on Broadway. Okay, I can see it. I can, see it. I can definitely see it. And when we go ahead, we could go ahead with this this e guy. I, I would love to, you know, go put it out there. But you know, <laughs> I like the way you think. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. So why not? There, why not? That that's yeah. literally the the question. Why not? Yeah. 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 
perfect, perfect. So outside of playing Uncle Phil, what other um, of the Black male characters in Bel Air um, or which of the other Black uh, male characters in Bel Air did you really resonate with the most? Um, well, the Jeffrey character is, uh, is a very strong character. You know, I love how he is, uh, you know, he's, he runs things, you know, he's like that backbone for all of us, you know, that we can all lean on. I think everybody needs to have a Jeffrey in their life, you know, um, and, and, you know, he, he comes from humble beginnings as well. You know, he's, he's been through a lot and, um, you know, but it goes to show that, you know, even though you've gone through something doesn't mean that's where you have to stay. You know, it's, you go through it, you don't stay in it. You know, we can rise from that and that we can use that to strengthen us. And, um, you know, we can um, be uh, at, uh, an inspiration to others, you know? So I think that uh, the Jeffrey character uh, is, is a great role uh, and that I, I could connect with and relate to. I mean, that's the only other role that's like my age group anyway, although the rest of them are kids, so, you know, but- uh, you, you didn't grow up like, like Will, you know? You didn't, you didn't resonate with growing up with, you know? Well, I mean, growing up, yeah, okay, I thought you meant now. Well, just, okay. just in general, just in resonate. general? Sure. Oh yeah, well, absolutely. Will, you know, yeah, growing up, you know, playing basketball, trying to figure out your, your, your focus, trying to, you know, figure out, okay, where do I want to, you know, direct my attention and my focus? How can I be of service to, 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 to myself and to this world, you know, and uh, what's my calling? What's my purpose? And so just figuring out, answering all those questions, Carlton as well, you know? Um, yeah. So, you know, growing up, you know, we all have to answer those questions and I was definitely one of, I was there. So, you know, I just love how, again, um, Carla Waddles, our showrunner, our writer, and and the entire writing team, they put together such great characters and and um, you know just uh, yeah, it's the the puzzle has just been so beautifully put together. So I'm just, I'm just proud to be a part of it. I really, honestly, bro, I am I'm beside myself. The fact that I'm actually I it's, I still like I still can't believe that I'm Uncle Phil. To be honest with you, like you know, real talk, it's like. I'm very humble and I'm, uh, I have an attitude of gratitude, you know, because uh, this was, it was all a dream, <laughs> you know, and here I am, you know, getting to um, play such an iconic character that has been so well received that could have easily gone left, you know, but uh, thank thankfully, you know, we stayed on the tracks and, uh, you know, we're, we're going to be premiering uh, February 23rd, season two. And uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be fire. So oh, good, you guys escaped Black Twitter. So you did good. <laughs> Everyone, you yeah, guys, yes. be careful. <laughs> Tell me about it. Right. Man. So getting into talking about season two, um, you know, I think the world now knows that Bel Air is, and I read somewhere it's like you know, kind of it's it is a remix and not a reboot right um yeah it's a re like, it's, it's a reimagining of of the uh the the, the sitcom exactly uh, in, in, in a dramatic way in a dramatic way right yeah, so now that we've gone through season one and everybody now realizes that right because i think we've said it in the beginning promotion all that stuff but nobody you know you don't get it until you see it and see what actually happens but now we have season one out of the way now going to season two um do you think um or will Bel Air now be able to kind of you know create its own identity and storylines and not necessarily have to you know kind of weave in the lines of the original Fresh Prince absolutely I think that what we've done is we've kind of uh created our own lane where we are um really just dealing with life today and the current temperatures that we're in and uh you know really just 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 as i said just finding solutions to these problems and and just being a, a a light you know in in this uh this darkness you know and um and uh it it's just uh, just such an ins inspirational show um and but but we're not sticking to any particular storylines or anything there's little things that we may you know touch on you know umbrella but not specifically we we have we can do what we want to do i think we've kind of uh, done a good job of that but yeah this season we're just picking up from last where you know phil is trying to you know figure out his career 
you know, now really where he wants to focus his, uh, his efforts and, uh, you know, in, in giving back to the community and, and being of service in that way. And, you know, also being uh, a supportive father and husband, um, you know, so the themes of the season is like, is obviously family love, but it's also trust. It's like a rebuild of trust between Will uh, and Phil and, and, and also Jeffrey um, and, um, you know, protection and, and uh, just care and um, brotherhood, you know, we're continuing that theme as well, which is very strong that runs through it. So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So you talk a little bit about um, Uncle Phil's career. How far do you think, or how far would you have liked him to go um, in his career? If you could think about, okay, you know, talk about this attorney, which is way forward, then it's kind of, eh. you know, how far did you think Uncle Phil could go? Well, I mean, what well, well, we saw in the first uh, season, how he was right at the, you know, to, about to become DA, uh, and we cut that short. So in the second season, you will see uh, where he goes and how far, like, it, 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 it's a beautiful story. I, I don't want to give anything away. You know, you'll just have to watch and see. But I, Adrian, love, you know, <laughs> law, law shows and like, you know, Philadelphia and, you know, this is I just love uh, you know that that just being on the stand and you know being able to uh, you know talk to the jury and, and do a, like 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 um, oh my gosh why is drawing like um, the Tom Cruise uh, and uh, Jack Nicholson um, uh, you can't handle the truth you gonna of course you're gonna put me on the spot now I'm supposed <laughs> to remember because you can't remember oh um oh man um uh classic movie i'm i, I am embarrassed actually that yes, i got it. thank you for adding me into your embarrassment thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, i can't be alone man I, you know, I, I, I gotta bring you with me um but yeah. anyways anyways yeah. I, I i hope that uh you know i get to do a lot a lot more of that you know being in the courtroom you know and 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 uh handling the, the court itself so but this season we uh we we really we really uh touch on a lot of great issues and i think that uh You'll 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 appreciate the direction that uh, Phil goes in goes in and 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 as well as well as Bev and with her art and yeah. yeah we it's it's really beautiful it's really beautiful tugs at the heartstrings for sure this season is very spicy I will say that it's uh it's got edge um it's bigger better and badder I say yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So talking about um, Aunt Viv, um, your co-star, Cassandra Freeman, um, yeah. you, know, you both provide an amazing example of Black love, especially the complexities of it, right? Um, have you learned anything from the show that has helped in your marriage or even in your communication? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, just uh, listening, being patient. Um, those were things, I mean, those are qualities that I had before, but I think they've been heightened. They've definitely been, um, you know, um, been heightened from working on the show. Um, and um, just uh, supporting, just 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 being there to support and, and uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm learning all the time, man. Like I said, our writers, they... They can put anything on my they, they're such good writers everything they write is gold and i'm 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 soaking it all up and trying to be a better person every day from being on this show man so a yeah. few good men thank you <laughs> thank you we can edit this we can edit this so <laughs> a few good men remember that show with jack and tom cruise yeah. mm -hmm. and kevin bacon was in there too and oh. Kiefer sutherland yeah. it was a great movie and oh and to be more we can't forget to be more but yeah the way he Tom Cruise was a boss in that, you know, just handling the court, putting putting the case together. And yeah, I would love to play something like that. That would be fun. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. Um, great, great, great. So um, going into, you know, just a little bit more about the conversation of uh, spouses and like relationship stuff. How do yeah. you support uh, a spouse who wants to go after their dreams or passions, but also kind of realizing that it's going to impact that family structure. Because what I thought was so dynamic about the first season and that particular storyline was that, wow, you know, sometimes there are people 
um, jobs or roles or careers that uh, require more time and people are more focused because it takes all of us to get this one person to the next level and the other person kind of feels you know either left out or not you know, so, so I wonder how Adrian you know supports someone you know how they would go about or advice to support one in that space yeah well I mean a relationship's about you know compromise you know you have to be able to communicate compromise support and um, you know uh, you have to uh, give your partner, you know, the room, you know, to to spread her or her wings, their wings, you know, so that they can fly. Uh, as much as you'd want them to do that for you, um, you know, you have to be be that for them because, you know, they're as good. You're you're as good as they are. They're as good as you are, right? So you can't hold them back, um, and uh, vice versa. So you got to make space. You have to make space for for each other, and and listen to each other and understand like. What is it you really want to do? What it, what are your passions? And how can I, you know, support? How can I make space for that so that we, as a collective, together, we can be better and we can expand and we can grow? Um, you know, my wife is also an actress and, you know, so we travel. We're, we're away from each other from time to time when she's on location, if I'm on location. And, you know, so we have to, you know, find ways to, you know, just communicate and and support each other so that we still can you know so that our relationship doesn't suffer you know because it's uh it's not easy but uh you know it, it, it there's tools i guess and we all have a manual i would say we, we each of us come with a manual and some are thick some of them aren't as thick, but we have to take the time to read it and understand so that we know how to you know communicate to our partners and, and uh that's important that's important. And I also feel like, you know, Black men and communication, like us feeling, being in a space where we um, feel tr honestly that we can communicate, whatever that may be, right? You know, I think sometimes we get a little restricted on um, being able to speak openly and honestly for fear of either being judged or, you know, not fitting a particular role um, that, you know, or gender role or any of those things. So I love kind of seeing even the one, the stories being told about this that allows Black men to express themselves, but then also um, the reality of it's happening in real life where people are, you know, the relationships are growing in that space. Yeah. And there's a lot of uh, heroism in that too. You know, when you show that side of you, vulnerability, you know, when you're transparency, you know, and just uh, that, that, that is very heroic, you know, and, and, and it's very uplifting and as, and inspiring to, to those watching, you know, they're like, oh, so it's okay to show weakness, but it's not weakness. It's actually strength, you know, and I always say, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. So when you're communicating to your partners and your friends, to your brothers, whatever, you know, you can say, the same thing in two different ways and it can be received you know in a negative way or a positive way you know your intention has to be you know positive it has to be to uplift and to support and not to you know push down and and to uh belittle um so as long as your intention and your heart is in the right place when you're talking to and you know trying to connect and, and support your friends then you, you should be successful awesome awesome so one of the biggest uh, enjoyments of the season for me, um, first, I'm wearing my black and gold hoodie. Uh -huh. QG, yeah, McCraw. Alpha, big brother, Yama yeah, McCraw. <laughs> yeah. And I love that. When I saw it, I said, hold on. Google, see Alpha, all those type of stuff, which we all know you are not, but also you work with the brothers down at um, yeah. Atlanta, um, their chapter, and then also work with headquarters to kind of prove things like that. So that was an amazing, amazing, amazing touch to this cultural reference. Um, yeah. So thank you. You did an amazing job. Come on, Step Master. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I had so much fun. I will definitely wear different shoes yes. if I have to do a scene like that again. Because I didn't, I wasn't gelling. Those shoes were very flat, and uh, my knees were. I was feeling it a few days for like a week, a couple of weeks actually. It was like, yeah, but um, that was uh, such a beautiful uh, episode, and and uh, just just moving, you know. I I uh, shout out to the the Alpha fraternity, uh, Alpha Phi Alpha, and uh, they they were just so happy to be there, and uh, they they really. Uh, made me feel like like you know one of their brothers you know and and um 
Yeah, who knows? I mean, I've always, I've never, I didn't have the the, the pleasure of going to uh, uh, going to school to be to pledge and be a, be in a fraternity. But it's something I've always, you know, in the back of my mind, like, oh, what would that have been like? I wish I had that experience. So that's the beautiful thing about this art and what we do is that we get to, you know, live our dreams. You know, we get to, you know, do a lot of things that, you know, we we dream about. And um, I'm so grateful that this dream came true. And uh, yeah, we're we gonna we gonna see anything else? Any any other any other divine nine frat squirrel maybe. A little bit, you can wink one eye if you want to tell. <laughs> I'll wink with two eyes. Right, right, right. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So yeah. why, it's kind of going into it. Like, why do you think those type of cultural marks are so important? Like the conversations around HBCUs and then, you know, Divine Nine and fraternity. That's our culture. That's our, that, that's us. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a reflection of, of who we are. It's a part of who we are. And a lot of people are uneducated they don't know that side uh so that's that that's the thing about our show is you know we're edutainment you know what i mean we're, we're, we're showing people um all the different sides of the coin you know about our culture and our community and who we are and what we represent and you know the the, the black excellence you know and and uh you know I, again it's just uh it just never gets old, man. I, I, every time I come to work I'm just, and I read the scripts, it's like Christmas. I'm like, oh, we get to do this. Oh, we get to talk about that. Oh, wow. I did. And, and even me, like, you know, I, I get to, I'm learning. All of us, there's a cast. We, there's a lot of little nuggets that will be like, oh, I didn't know about that. Oh, cool. So, so it's, it's great. You know, we get to learn every day. Good, good. One of the also things I wanted to touch on is just get your thoughts on is um, how or kind of like your advice from um, parenting and dealing with your children with mental health, right? Um, I think mm -hmm. of it that, you know, so happy that it was expressed and, and touched on and talked about, but I would like to know just from you, as we start to now have these conversations in our community about mental health and, you know, the issues that we go through, what's the best approach in your opinion um, in having those conversations? Yeah, well, I mean, that is such a, uh um such a, a popular topic you know in today's world and uh it's sad but i think that um it's just making your child feel safe and just making them feel uh comfortable talking to you about every and anything because a lot of a lot of uh kids will hold back and they will share with their friends at school or outside on the block but when they come through the doors and they come home, they go right upstairs to their room, they get on their phones, you know, social media. It's just, you know, and they don't look you in the eye and talk to you from the heart and really share, you know, how they're feeling. And so I think as a parent, it's important to pay attention to your kids. Like when you when you ask how are you doing, it's not just how you're doing, but really like, no, how are you? and look them in the eye and, and even share with them. Cause I think when you open up to your kids, it, it makes them go, oh, I didn't know that dad, or I didn't know that mom, you know? And, and then, and, the, and even some things that you may share with your kids, your kids will be able, would, would relate to and go, wow, I'm dealing with that at school. You know, you're dealing with that at the office at work and all this, but it's, it's the same thing. And then how do you deal with it, dad, you know? and and then you can help them to deal with their situations at, at school or, or wherever at work, you know? But I, I think it's just making them feel comfortable, making them feel, make them feel seen You know, really see them and, and hear them. And, and then they will, you know, come to you and feel, feel comfortable to come to you and, and open up to you. So, yeah. Um, so, you are our turn gentleman feature. Super excited for that to come out and to be. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. So I want to know, how do you define your personal style? Um, my personal style is very, you know, casual chic, I think. Um, I like to be very comfortable, casual, but have little pieces, little, you know, um, uh, you know, I, business casual sometimes, you know, but uh, yeah, I, I, I love fashion. I love, I love to just, you know, 
have little statements, you know, little pieces that, you know, will stand out, but, but I got to be comfortable. You know, I don't like, I mean, Philip loves his suits. He's in his suits all the time, but that ain't, that ain't, <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm glad that I can, you know, make them work, but, but only when I have to. Yeah, yeah, I'd rather be in sweatpants and okay. t-shirts and you know what I mean, baseball hats and just chilling. Yeah. yeah. Listen, those things are tailored. So I'm hoping that they come home with you because who else gonna wear them? <laughs> 100. Those are mine. Those are yours. All mine. And shout out to Queenie, Queen Sylvia, who is our wardrobe on the show. She is amazing. She makes us all feel and look like royalty. And uh we're just so blessed to have her uh this season so um yeah she's responsible for all the fine threads that you're going to see this coming season awesome awesome yeah we yeah two more two more questions and i'm gonna get you out of here my brother so um just have your question something that's topical right now uh, re uh recent controversy over just elba um talks about a statement about you know stop being called um stop being called a black actor uh more in reference of you know not wanting to be typecast as we spoke about earlier and making sure that we're having um conversations that are aligned with actors who are just doing the work and whatever the, whatever role they have what are your thoughts on you know being a black actor or being on black shows well i mean we are who we are you know you, you see who we are when you're a white actor you're a black actor you're an asian actor you're, you know south asian actor whatever yeah. but you know we are actors at the end of the day we are all actors and we're all storytellers and uh we have a different culture we come from a different background so our stories our narratives are going to be different you know um and so i i think it's important that if we are telling our story that it should be coming from us you know we can't have white execs you know heads telling us how to tell our story just as we wouldn't expect to have black execs telling them how to tell their story or asians or whatever you know you want to tell your own story you know for example denzel washington said you know uh scorsese you know he directed goodfellas because he's italian he understands that culture you know uh you know uh john singleton did boys in the hood you know you know, there's a reason you know, they're, they're doing these stories because they can they can identify, they can relate. So, but yeah, I mean, we're actors. I want to be seen as an actor and and I want to be respected by my peers, you know, and just just be known for good work and, and not, as I said, put in a box or pigeonhole and say, oh, he only does these kinds of shows or, you know, um, so so yeah i think we need to open up and and just see us all as as artists we're artists exactly and i think you know the conversation for me it kind of stems more past the you know above the actor it's the person who's writing the story the person who's casting the people who are producing right when you think about this particular person do they have to be white or mm -hmm. do they have to be you know um heterosexual or whatever those questions are right that now doesn't pigeonhole, you know, a certain demographic into one particular space, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think it's uh, it's definitely opened up a lot more now. We can, you know, we can see each other as as uh, for for what we are. What you know, it's it's not such a narrow space anymore. I think it's it's much, much more, much wider perspective. You know, yeah. Awesome. So my last question for you is, what can we look forward to from Mr. Adrian Holmes? Okay. Uh, well, <laughs> February 23rd, season two, baby, Bel Air. And then um, what else we got? Uh, I'm going back to shoot season three of Star Trek, um, Strange New Worlds. Um, and uh, and then there's a couple other projects I'm on hold for right now that I'm, I'm hoping uh, work out. But uh, yeah, soon to be told. Perfect. Yeah. But it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be busy. It's gonna be nice. That's what we love to see. Please let us know everything going on with you so we can make sure we let the people know. And I gotta say I love you guys, man. You know, anytime you know I, I get to work with you guys is a it's a pleasure. You guys are you guys are the real deal. And uh 
good energy. Love you. Yeah, really appreciate you guys. Uh, we appreciate you too as well, man. We, we love the work you do. We love your represent, representation. We love what you stand for. It's amazing. Definitely on brand. So I'm going to get you one of these hoodies. I know. Please do. I have one at the, at the uh, I should have had one at the shoot for you, but timing and everything. So hey, man. I'll end. send you my address. But I got you. Some of the answers, I got you. <laughs> but okay, first, brother. Thank you so much for this. Thank you for taking the time out. And we'll definitely talk soon. You bet, my guy. And uh, go Kansas City. Go Philly. Go Philly. Philly. I was born go. in Philly. Oh, you are born in Philly. Okay. We'll go with Philly. We'll go with You're Philly. You're going to go with Philly for this Go, one. go, 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 Rihanna. Go, Rihanna. Exactly. Go, Rihanna. <laughs>